Hi there, it's Billy Tarasio from Modern Law, and today's tip of the day is who gets to keep the house during a divorce? And interestingly enough, this is the most popular blog on our website, and there are thousands of topics, and this is the most popular nationwide beyond Arizona where we practice. And um, let's go over these issues because they're big. Um, the house is not only many times the largest asset that a couple has, but there's also an extreme emotional connection that you have to your house, and it represents physically where you live. Moving is hard. There's lost money always when a house is sold, so it, it really matters. Who gets to stay in the house? There's three possibilities. You, your spouse, or no one. Of course, that's easy and that's on its face, but let's get into the nitty-gritty details. Um, can you legally stay in your house during a divorce? Yes, you absolutely can. And you cannot be made to leave. Now, what if you want to have your house leave, your spouse leave the house? Um, there are a couple ways you could do that. You could either request a temporary order through the family court for exclusive use of the house. And there's no guarantee that the courts can actually do that, but it is possible. And the other option is if there's been any violence, if you've been in danger at all, if you've been subjected to violence, then um, you qualify to go get an order of protection. And that order of protection will make your spouse leave the house. And it will be a protected address. He or she will not be able to come back to the house. Will you have more of a legal right to stay in the home if you stay in the house during the pendency of a divorce? So the question is, if you move out, can you ask for the house and move back in? Um, legally, yes. Practically, it's hard. Practically speaking, once you've moved out, you're probably not coming back. Now, this is not always the case. It's absolutely possible that we can get you back into the house, especially if your spouse agrees. But if we're asking for a judge to order that that spouse get out and you get in, then it might be more difficult. Um, let's talk about the practical matter of keeping the house. What, how do you keep the house? If you keep the house, you have to buy your spouse out. And that can happen in a number of ways. You can buy the spouse out of half of the equity of the home or whatever number we negotiate by refinancing. Now, mortgage rates are amazing right now and it's a great time to refinance, but you may not qualify to refinance. Um, to qualify to refinance, you have to have enough income on your own in order to pay for the house. Now, if you're counting on income for spousal maintenance or child support that you'll get in the divorce, it's gonna be very difficult for a mortgage uh, professional to actually qualify you to finance the house. It is possible, but it's difficult. So you've gotta have the credit score and the income in order to refinance the house. Well, what if your spouse says you don't have to refinance the house and he or she will continue to co-own it with you? Is that a good idea? The answer is probably not. It can get really tricky if you're co-owning a house that only one of you lives in. It is possible, and I have worked out those types of deals, but they're hard, they're difficult. Now, if you want more information on this, um, check out the Modern Divorce Podcast. I did a full hour of talking through these issues with divorce attorney Devin Slavensky, and we talked about the ins and outs of whether or not you should keep the house during divorce. There's emotional impacts, there's psychological impacts, there's financial impacts. So check that out if you want more information, but this is the nitty gritty on keeping the house in a divorce.